Terry Dayton back with you guys. This time, another Kalamazoo River childhood story. We're featuring The Rock. Let me tell you what this one's about. You're gonna love it. All right, so once again, when we were growing up here in Battle Creek, about 1975 to 80 is the years that I was here, there was always activity out here at this gigantic rock, okay? All the high schools, and there was also like special event clubs that would come out here and paint the rock, okay? It's located in Battle Creek, Michigan, right on the penetrator where it meets Columbia Avenue. So there's the Columbia Bridge. This is the ramp that goes down to M66. And the rock used to be very visible from the highway, so everybody put their little advertisements on it, right? Well, now, of course, we got all these trees that have grown up, so you really can't see it. It's kind of hidden, but we'd like to tell the story of what went on in this area. Not only with the rock, but some other things that Tom used to do. <laughs> all right, so let's kill it. Back in the 70s, when us three brothers lived in this house about 40 feet behind us. Check it out here. Here it is. Good old 401. Still in good shape, man. Okay, back to you. This rock here was very famous. Three, four times a week, people would come and paint this different colors, make ladybugs out of it. And we have Lakeview High School down the road here. Yep. We have Harper Creek down here, and we have Central down here. And they would compete with their colors on this rock. You can see how thick some of these layers are from over the years. It, and it used to be real thick. You can see where the, the age has, the water and everything has washed it down to the original rock. Yeah. But Oops. what happened Don't is- Don't worry would, about that paint anymore. <laughs> <laughs> there would be, there would be a lot of competition out here. And you know, one day, Harper Creek would come out here and paint it their colors, and the same day, Central would come down here and paint right over the top of theirs, and then Lakeview, so it was it was quite a scene. And then there's some uh, vandalizers that just come around and destroy anything that anybody did, right? Exactly. You know, no they, they'd come and just dump paint right over the top of, you know, Lakeview School's paint job. And All right, so another one of the childhood stories that I would share with guys, and now I have time here to verify it, when these poor kids were out here painting, we would get on top of the roof over there in our house with bottle rockets and we'd bomb these guys. They had no idea where they were coming from because we were on the back side of the roof and just lo lobbing these bottle rockets over at these kids, right? And there was another thing that happened in this area. I'm gonna let Tom tell that story. All right, Tom, so what else uh, transpired out here by the rock? You got something else you'd like to share? Yeah, one of my outstanding friends back in the school days, we used to come and hide in these bushes and we would throw tomatoes and eggs at the cars coming by down the penetrator. No. And we actually got all the tomatoes out of his mom's garden and we didn't have the money for the eggs, so we grabbed a BB gun. Oh, and wasn't there also turnips involved, I heard? There were some turnips, yeah, yes. Do yes, there was. Go ahead. All right, back to the BB gun. But we, we actually were in these bushes, these trees right here, hiding down and we would shoot to the hubcaps of vehicles going by. And unfortunately, one of the BBs must have caught the wind or something and smashed out the passenger window of just, a taxi cab Just driver. a little off target. Yeah, yeah. a little off. Yeah. And it, it smashed the taxi cab driver's window out and he slammed on the brakes. So in a panic, we took off running all the way we went underneath the columbia main street bridge and we stayed underneath for like four hours but what did you do with the rifle when you ran one of us dropped the rifle oh. at the scene uh -oh. so you know we were in panic but we got our stories together straight we said there was a tin can in the crotch of this tree right here and we were shooting the can so our stories matched perfect well Very we were innocent. we were walking back up columbia four hours later and a cop whipped us over and put us in the cop car, took us to the police station. He had a BB uh, and he had the piece of glass from a taxi cab driver's window or passenger window that looked like a cone. So, I mean, he had his evidence together. I don't, he found it and he put my friend in one room, put me in the other room and interrogated us. 
and we our stories matched that we were actually shooting a can in this tree so which was the absolute truth it was a, yep yeah so, it was a bad so, shot man it was an accident okay <laughs> it wasn't not a deliberate aim at the taxi cab driver right toe. so so there it is so yep we we got the bb gun back and he let us go but but we, didn't the cops bring the bb gun to dad and say uh it was Mr. dayton i believe this is your rifle it was registered to my dad and he was very happy about that wasn't he yes very happy <laughs> so in case you're wondering where all that paint came from we still have some paint take a look at that all right nice old rust-oleum in a very rusty can, right? <laughs> so let's see if it works. Uh, no, it doesn't work. Either way, guys, another verified story of my childhood with my brother Tom. Love you, man. Love you too, man. <laughs>